I really do think Worcester is a great ship in World of Warships, and I think it is perfect when you're having a tough day. I really do find the Worcester to be incredibly consistent and good in almost any match. And to show you the kind of day I was having before playing, well, I'm trying to get g footage to make a video on, and I'm just having a bunch of games like this, where I get very little damage and the game ends quickly. And look at that, my entire team lived. A typical World of Warships game these days, at least is what it feels like. So to take a break, I figured, hey, let's try out the Holland, see how that goes. And well, we're fighting a Marceau reasonably early into the game in our spawn. 11 minutes left on the clock, and the best I can possibly do here is trade. There's an Otago, and of course, Marceau definitely uh, out DPMs me. So lucky to get a trade there, but that's not really what you want to see around eight or nine minutes into the match, as far as your team is concerned. So then I figured I'll try Slava. You know, I haven't played a battleship yet today. And oh boy, here come the pings. <laughs> A very fun experience is about to be had in Slava, and I thought the worst of it would certainly be the pings here. The submarine, free to roam up middle and essentially kill me for free. That's what I was assuming, so I need to get away. But there's carrier planes incoming, and I figure, okay, it's the super carrier. It's a good ship, but it's only one torpedo squadron, right? It's only four torpedoes. What's the worst that could happen? I'm in a Slava, it should be fine. I'll just play the back of the map and we're down half our HP from a single torpedo drop. <laughs> and we can't heal anymore. So ping, ping, ping later and the submarine's danger homer, homing torps are on us. And using a damage control, we should be able to dodge these just fine. Even Slava. And keep in mind, Slava with range mod is struggling to be in range of anything and to really have an impact on the game, which I was kind of shocked at, honestly, I gotta say. Um, keep in mind here, I have a, uh, well, nearly full right rudder here to try and dodge the uh, United States, a very creative super carrier name. Uh, I tried to dodge his dive bombers. And now I'm finally full rudder left because I know, well, there's torpedo bombers on the way. And before I can even angle into the torpedo bombers, they are actually already in my AA range. <laughs> the man who just dropped on me, and I had near full right rudder, in the time it took me to go full left rudder and turn in slightly, he's already dropping me again from over 20 kilometers away. <laughs> At least now I know I do need to dodge these uh, torpedo bombers much, much better than I had in the past. And we're still taking a ton of damage. Notice we really can't heal too much either. So finally, after a good drop, we do get a bit of healing and on fire again. Good guy Kuznetsov shows up and shockingly, the most overpowered commander isn't even enough to save us here. This was a pretty rough experience. I was a little out position. I wasn't playing around my teammates, but my teammates are playing on the B line. That's really not a good position. We need crossfires and that's just a losing play. So I don't really know what to do. Either just lose for free or get tortured by the carrier and lose anyway. It's not a great, uh, not a great way to go out. And we actually died while taking only 90,000 damage. Um, yeah, our ship has over 90k HP, and only 90,000 damage received showed up. I guess those uh, torpedo drops were just too nasty for Wargaming to really show. So I figured, let's try out submarines. They don't get tortured by carriers. But then this song started playing, and I was looking at this hill, and man, I just had a really nice nap. Honestly, I really do love that submarines are in the game now. It's just so peaceful and relaxing. Take a nice break from the frustration of World of Warships. But onto the ship that I am actually trying to showcase in this video today. I had a rough experience, as you can see in my games on this day, and the Worcester actually really made up for that. This ship has, well, more range than the Des Moines beside me. It's got better AA than the Des Moines beside me, and honestly, 
that's really nice when dealing with a lot of the frustrations of this game, since people do tend to play at the back of the map. Here I do position not amazingly pushing into the Des Moines, but taking advantage of a uh, friendly destroyer smoke screen is a really great way to start off a game in a booster. My aim, you're going to notice, isn't amazing. I haven't played this ship in a very long time, so uh, I have to get used to the lead on the arcs. But the DPM of the Wooster feels so good, especially after playing the Jinan and the whole Pan-Asian cruiser line. It's just amazing to have that 30 millimeters of pen on the HE and the insanely better alpha. Look at this. Holland takes six and a half thousand damage from a single salvo from us. Yeah, that's not happening on the Pan-Asian cruiser line. Of course, we don't have smoke, but we can actually play this ship in open water if we're careful. It's not easy, but if we're careful, we can. And as an added bonus, for some reason, Worcester gets the plain anti-submarine warfare. Ships like Hindenburg and a lot of the other heavier cruisers actually just get the uh, um, depth charges that drop off the back of the ship. Why Wooster gets the planes, I don't know, but it does make it an excellent choice in this submarine CV meta. Of course, we do have to chase these guys now. It's a very open map, so this is not what I want to see in a Wooster. We'll try and make it work. The key here really is to get ourselves on a sharp angle from this curve first. He's the big threat. He's the one with battleship guns. So I want to get behind him, essentially, forcing him to turn full broadside to the majority of my team, as you can see in the south, to even possibly shoot at me. That's the goal here. But we do get uh, a Harugobo smoked up and starting to farm us. So we'll just dodge around a little bit and try and go dark. That's the really nice thing about this ship. It's got great concealment still. And of course, if we get close enough, that radar can be absolutely disgusting against destroyers. Submarines are around here, but since I'm dark, I can just turn away very easily and I should be able to dodge the torpedoes just fine. Damage control is available if the homing torps do come. But uh, in this current iteration of subs, for whatever reason, the single pings don't last very long at all. But a double ping can last over a minute. <laughs> so the single pings really aren't too bad. It's that double ping that's really, really brutal since the torpedo's home for an incredibly long time. And uh, well, as soon as you use your damage control, that's it. They get a double ping again. It's just permanent homing until your next, your next damage control. But this tight angle that I'm taking here, you notice the curve first, we're basically perfectly behind him at this point. He'll have to turn basically flat broadside to our battleships if he wants to even try to shoot at me. That's why I think this position is decent as far as a uh, farming position, open water position. And you'll notice I'm not under very much pressure here. I also have the uh, noob uh, commander upgrade that is incoming fire alert, so I'll know the instant somebody is shooting at me from a longer distance. I say noob because it basically allows me to not really care about situational awareness. I don't really need to scan the skies. All I need to do is wait for that alert to show up. So that it does certainly make life much easier when trying to open water a ship like the Wooster. So I do take it, even though I do call it a noob upgrade. It is still very, very, very powerful. You'll notice also that we pop hydro, we know torps are common, and I'm gonna actually turn in. I'm gonna turn into these two little islands. As much as this is an open water map, especially from the south, there's a couple little islands here we can make use of. So these can be little good checkpoints or resting stops for us as we push into a kiting team. And my aim really does suck here, actually. Wow, watching it back, yikes. <laughs> it's still a good game though. So later on, we're gonna get a ton of damage, but yeah, not the best aim. If you're a better aimer with the Wooster, you could have had an even better, an even better game than this. So it's a good ship. It really, really, really is. And since I am pushing up here, I do decide to stall behind this island here because the Furugumo is starting to feel comfortable enough to start to farm me and shoot at me. If a destroyer is comfortable enough to shoot at a Worcester, I probably can take that as a sign that I've pushed very aggressively and maybe should hold up just a little bit. Uh, because this ship is so good against DDs, just look at the damage output on that destroyer that if he feels confident enough to shoot at me, I probably am overextended just a little bit. We're almost the leading ship on this push since our destroyers and certainly our submarine are not getting spotted. 
and uh, our battleship and Des Moines are on their way, but this is a bit of a sketchy spot to be in. We can easily get killed here, especially since Henry and Zhao hurt. That HE is very painful, and of course, a Hergamo HE is just constant DPM, so I need to get to this next little checkpoint island, and this is as far as I'm gonna go. There's really no point in going past this island, pushing into the spawn, since there isn't another stopping point. There isn't another point where I can break contact and get a little break, heal up, get my damage control back, that kind of thing. So this is it. This is as far as I'm gonna go. And then we'll notice on the map that the enemy team is pushing back into us, into our spawn. Kind of an odd scenario where both teams are pushing the enemy spawns. <laughs> At least we do have control of B and C, so we do have the points lead just barely. We certainly have the points tick lead. Worcester, of course, is amazing at getting over these little islands. So we'll get a little few cheeky shots in on the curve first, hoping for a fire. And then I'm going to turn around and get out of here. I think the open water type of light cruiser is not going to happen every game. Obviously, I've been playing a lot of the Pan-Asian cruisers, the Jinan. I've been having miserable games in, even though that is a smoke. That's essentially a portable checkpoint system like I've been talking about here with use of these islands. So it's not every game that these are going to happen. You can't expect that. But what's nice is that Wooster is powerful enough to make this work, even on maps and positions that aren't so good. And I think you'll agree that most of the maps in this game do actually have a ton of islands that work amazing for light cruisers to spam over near caps, near objectives, and near pushing points. It is, there's a lot of maps that help this sort of playstyle out. So going for a Wooster is, I think, a really good decision as this game ages and gets older and more content is being added. We're getting more CVs, more submarines, we're getting more things that do damage without being spotted and risking their ship at all. So having a ship like the Wooster that has decent anti-submarine warfare Compared to other anti-submarine warfare, I think overall it's all too weak. <laughs> These new subs are pretty tanky. Uh, I've found they're very difficult to take down. But uh, it's really the defensive fire on this ship that allows it to play in some of those island positions. I really don't trust myself playing a Des Moines on islands anymore, since its AA is just not good enough to hold up to a carrier strike. And there's some AP bombs that are particularly nasty against a Des Moines. So, as strange as it sounds, I'd almost recommend a Worcester over a Des Moines these days. Um, even though Des Moines is a very, very good ship. It, not, don't get me wrong, it's still a good one, but there's just something about Worcester in its ability to deal with some of these more annoying threats, these carriers, these submarines, that kind of thing, that I like. And it certainly worked out in this game, and Again, this is like the only match where I actually had a decent experience in this uh, day of playing the game. Get a few hits on the submarine, but again, we need to back off here for a little bit. Hold on. We do have a points lead. We do have a cap lead still. Our DD and sub are kind of chasing a little too much into the enemy spawn. That GK is very much out of position. And well, with the Zhao trying to get into our B cap, I figured it'd be a good idea to try and hold him off, but uh, he does get around the island and undetected. We are now detected. I knew this was going to happen because that submarine was on us earlier. We did force him to dive and run away a little bit as we spotted him with radar, but now I'm very confident that's who is spotting me at the moment. And this incoming fire alert is going to be really, really useful for knowing when to dodge, how to dodge these salvos. And a Montana, Des Moines, and especially the Republic, that's a pretty scary one for cruisers, just shot at us, and we did okay. You're gonna notice that I actually take my time here. I'm not going to instantly open up on this Des Moines or the Zhao that are in the cap, and it's important because we have a points lead, so we don't really necessarily need the caps right away. We do have some time left on the clock, and there's torps going in for the Des Moines. Patience is a really tough thing, but it's really, really required for these open water games. Now though, that the torps missed, we do just need to take this Des Moines out. So I'm trying to angle as much as possible. You'll notice I've positioned my ship in a way where the Republic and the Montana aren't gonna have a great angle on me. 
I can get all my guns firing at this Des Moines while being very well angled to the Montana and the Republic. I'm also using my rudder a ton. I'm using my throttle a ton, trying to avoid these uh, shells coming in. Des Moines AP is definitely scary at close range, but at this range, I'm not too worried since I can often just dodge in between the salvos. Monty gets another shot into us as we take out the Des Moines. Um, Worcester HE pressure is pretty nasty. It does some serious work. And now that we've taken the Des Moines out, it really is just a matter of hanging on to our sea cap, trying to take out this submarine with the help of our gearing, while also farming out the Republic. And finally, we get to see some stereotypical Worcester gameplay where we're sitting behind an island, having someone spot for us, and uh, farming, essentially. So this is really the first time I get to do that, outside of that little bit of smoke at the beginning that I really didn't make good use of. But I'm really happy with my positioning here, where I'm able to halt the push of this Republic. This is really not something you want to push into, um, especially as a Republic, since his armor is not amazing, even though I'm not using IFHE. Still a lot of HE pressure. And at the same time, we know the submarine is somewhere around C, and if our destroyer spots the submarine at all, I want to be there to support him. Since it does take a little bit to work through submarine's health now, it's really important that I get a few salvos in to take out the submarine without the gearing losing all of its HP. Since at this point, the caps and the points are incredibly close, and we're about to be down two caps to zero, since they are stalling out the sea cap. Our submarine is forced to dive as uh, the enemy Zhao has pushed back into the cap. It's really important for me to just finish off this Republic. At this point, even though the Zhao is a really good target, since uh, it is susceptible to the 30 millimeter pen of the Worcester, I just need to take out this Republic. And now we play aggressive. We have to get in there, since these two caps probably tick through enough points to let the enemy team win, especially if that Zhao is allowed to come over and kill our submarine. Fortunately, the enemy Balao submers surfaces for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure why he did that, but this is why we want it to be close, since our little bit of salvos here help the gearing and uh, we take out the submarine for our fourth kill and 180k damage. I certainly was very, very happy with this game so far. And honestly, I should have just gone dark here. These shots here are me under the assumption that we're gonna lose, but we actually have a more than enough points buffer now that I could easily go dark and we could just accept a win here. But uh, my brain wasn't quite functioning as good as it should have been after those games earlier. Uh, it's a little bit tilted, so my uh, brain wasn't fully comprehending how much of a lead we actually did have here. But regardless, Zhao taking this fight, it's really, really one-sided. Assuming the Monty doesn't get a good salvo into us, and he's been loading HE, which is why I've been very okay with uh, going broadside to the Monty in these last few minutes of the match. But Zhao versus Worcester is really not much of a contest here. He has to go so broadside to get all of his guns off. And of course, we have so much more DPM. And if he goes broadside, it's a very easy target for us to hit. I'm not even gonna switch to AP, it's just the HE pressure that is enough. And if I had a little better aim, I think I possibly could have killed this guy just a little bit sooner. You'll notice again, the very extreme angle we're showing to the Montana, trying to minimize the amount of damage that he can do. I uh, slightly over angle here, a bit of a mistake, but 220K in a Wooster? and potentially a Kraken, and nope, unfortunately, we don't get it. The submarine gets the Kraken, but that's the open water Wooster. A really good ship, even on a day where I was having an extremely rough time playing World of Warships. These good games can happen in the right ship, in the right circumstance. As far as the build is concerned, I think the only real interesting thing you could do is IFHE. It's a really strong skill for farming battleships, but against everything else, it really hurts the, uh, the fire damage you can possibly get. And since the last rework or a few reworks of high explosive, Wooster actually gets 30 millimeters of pen on that HE. So I really don't feel the need to use it and I'd rather buff up my survivability and potentially some of my fire chance as well, since fires are very strong against those battleships as well. 
As far as the upgrades, I think this is pretty standard. Propulsion mod is very useful for these open water games where I'm constantly using my rudder and my uh, acceleration and braking to dodge shells. I think Wooster is an excellent, excellent tier 10 ship and surprisingly one of the best ones into the current subs and CV meta that is very frustrating, but Wooster managed to do all right. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.